Now, out of all the things that can improve your health, this one thing is pretty much at the top of the list. But I found out recently I've never done a video on this one specific topic. And that has to do with diversity of your microbes in your gut and how to increase your own diversity of the microbiome. So first of all, what is this word diversity? Well, it's the number of different species that you have in your gut, okay? And you also have a factor of richness, which is the total amount of microbes. So ideally you want a rich microbiome with a lot of different species, you know? And this kind of goes against this idea of like health is being clean, right? Free of germs. Well, apparently it's just the opposite of that. You want a lot of germs in your body, but inside, and you want them friendly. If you don't have this diversity, believe it or not, you actually get more unfriendly pathogens. I'm talking about like salmonella, H. pylori, C. diff, E. coli. You know, all these microbes do live in your body in a healthy environment and they don't bother you until the relationship changes because of the environmental changes. But if you're missing this diversity, all sorts of issues can happen. Diarrhea, inflammation in your gut, you get more toxins, obesity, your metabolism slows down, your mood is lowered. And this all relates to something called dysbiosis. And in fact, dysbiosis is pretty much involved or associated with every single illness out there. Even Alzheimer's, Parkinson's, ADHD, schizophrenia, bipolar, having anxiety, depression. So I think this topic is really, really important. Even cancer. Yes, there's usually always dysbiosis when you have cancer. So it's so important to have a wide variety of these species uh, to make vitamins for immune protection, to keep your inflammation down, to feed your colon cells, to help you produce amino acids and neurotransmitters and other proteins, to keep your energy high, all sorts of uh, health related things. Now, you have to also realize that in your gut, 99% uh, of all the microorganisms are bacteria, but you do have 1% left, and that uh, kind of makes up friendly fungus, friendly yeast, friendly mold, and other friendly microorganisms. So it's not all bacteria. And then if we look at the bacteria, okay, there's two categories of bacteria, and they're both what's called anaerobes, which they survive without oxygen. One is called obligate anaerobes. Okay. And these are the type of microbes that they die if you expose them to oxygen. So they can only live without oxygen. And then you have another category of anaerobic bacteria called facultative. This type of bacteria can live, even though it's called an anaerobic uh, bacteria, uh, it can live without oxygen and it also can live with oxygen. So it can do both. And out of the majority of research that's out there, it's the facultative anaerobic microbes that are studied. Not these other microbes that uh, hate oxygen, right? They die with oxygen. And those specific bacteria make up 99% of all the bacteria, okay? Only 1% is the, um, the other ones, which actually can live with oxygen or without. And it's interesting because most of the research is on that 1% only. So in other words, there's a lot we don't know, okay? Because it's hard to culture those microbes that are only dependent on an environment without oxygen. So there's a tremendous amount of things we just don't know. But what we do know for sure is the more diversity, the more health you're going to have. But even if we're talking about like nutrient dense foods, okay? Nutrient dense foods are dependent on the diversity of microbes in the soil. So if you want nutrient dense foods, you have to make sure that the soil has a great wide range of microbes. If we want health, we need to make sure that we have a wide range of microbes in our gut. It's the diversity of microbes in the gut that gives the plant immune protection, that gives the plant vitamins and minerals and phytonutrients and disease resistance. And then that plant becomes stronger and it too is filled with microbes because plants also have their own microbiome and so that relates to the animals that eat the plants, right? The health of that animal is dependent on the health of the plant. Now, this is going to relate to uh, the next topic of, of how do we increase the diversity of, of microbes in our gut. The first way is to eat food that has been grown on soil that has diversity, okay? 
so buying your salad and vegetables at the farmer's market is going to be better than buying vegetables at the grocery store that you have no idea where it came from. But you pretty much know if you eat the food because it's like tasteless. If you have more flavor, you're going to have more nutrients. And you can be rest assured that they were grown on a really good diverse uh, microbiome in the soil. Another way is to start eating more of a diversified types of plants, okay? So in your salad, and I'm totally guilty of this, I usually have had the same type of lettuce over and over for a very long time. And so what I've done recently, after I'm studying all this, is I started to um, diversify the types of plants that I eat in my salad. So I'm, I'm putting things in my salad that I've never ate before. And then when I go in the grocery store, I just basically try several different new plants. And so I put them in my salad and I eat them. And I definitely will tell you, I notice a big difference. Another thing that can increase diversity is actually exercise. The exercise stress, which is a positive stress, creates more diversity in your gut. Also, better sleep will do it. And intermittent fasting. Yeah, it adds a positive stress that increases diversity of microbes in your gut versus snacking through the day, which basically creates a lot of lazy microbes. It's very similar to the animals on my farm. If I feed them like snacks all day, they get overweight, they get sluggish, they don't really do much. So for example, my pigs, I have them on an intermittent fasting schedule. They get one meal a day. My chickens are on an 18 to six window. So I feed them twice a day so they can fast for 18 hours. And the same thing with my dogs, but I don't give my dogs uh, a lot of snacks in between little treats because that breaks the fast. The next thing that can increase diversity is uh, consuming more phenols. Okay, phenols. What are phenols? Well, it's those phytonutrients uh, like um, the flavonoids uh, in different uh, plants and lemons and limes and berries, things like that. And also the tannins in different herbs, like uh, even different teas. Cuminin in turmeric is a uh, phenol, but phenols are a, a wide category of a lot of different types of phenols. And if you're consuming a, a wide range of uh, vegetables and maybe berries and other plants, you're going to get a lot of phenols. And that's going to stimulate a, a wide range of uh, different species in your gut. A really good way to increase diversity is to consume sprouts or microgreens that are grown on soil. Because sprouts normally aren't grown on soil. But when you start getting into microgreens, not grown on like coconut fiber, I'm talking about actual soil. It's a bit hard to find, but you can grow your own. But those microgreens are loaded with not just friendly microbes in the plant itself, but phytonutrients, including a lot of polyphenols and fiber that your microbes will really love. So when you're eating microgreens, you're really supporting your gut health in a big way. And the cool thing is you don't need a lot of them. You just need a little bit because they're so concentrated with these phytonutrients. The next thing is probiotic foods, kefir, sauerkraut, essential. They have such a wide range of different microbes. You talk about diversity of microbes in sauerkraut and kimchi and even kefir. I mean, there's just a lot of different microbes. So when you eat those foods that are diversified, you get the benefit of that. I mean, let's just take one microbe, the lactobacillus microbe. Certain lactobacillus uh, microbes uh, help you make dopamine, which can help support and even potentially prevent um, ADHD, depression, anxiety, and many other similar disorders. And then also raw food, more raw food is better. So if you're going to eat vegetables and you eat them all just completely cooked to death, well, that's not going to support the microbiome as much as eating them raw. I think a balance of steamed and cooked and raw is a good thing. Now, it's very important also to talk about the flip side. What lowers this microbiome diversity, okay? Uh, number one, broad spectrum antibiotics. It's a killer. Uh, anytime you take an antibiotic and try to take them sparingly, always take a probiotic at the same time or start consuming probiotic foods at the same time. Very important. There are other things that are antibiotics that you probably are not aware of, like glyphosate, which is in the GMO foods, because they spray this glyphosate on the soil, and that 
actually is classified as an antibiotic. And unfortunately, that chemical is in so many foods. It's, I mean, it's, just, it's in almost everything, which means we need to kind of actively work on building up our gut. Now, animals that are fed on a monoculture, like only one or two or three uh, foods, whether it's grains or even grasses, have less microbes to work with, and they themselves have a, uh, a lower amount of diversity because the animal gets its diversity from the wide range of plants. And this is why when I entered in my beef in, in the study uh, that I did, I don't know if you saw the, the video on it, but I'll put a link down below. I have a very diverse pasture of not just grasses, but weeds. I mean, it's like like probably over 40 or 50 different plants that these animals have a chance to uh, eat and it's their smorgasbord of all sorts of things they can eat and uh, when i entered in my beef and we compared that to a lot of the other uh, farms around the country i mean talk about health i mean the, even the phytonutrients in the beef was like three times higher than most other farms that's right there are plant-based chemicals in animals that's right so now you can get your antioxidants by eating beef right you just have to make sure that it's really, really healthy. So another thing that will lower the diversity is stress, artificial sweeteners, inflammation will do it, a fatty liver. In fact, any liver problem because the liver makes bile and without the quantities of bile, then we get an imbalance in our microbes. We get this dysbiosis. So bile is actually made by your microbes, but also bile controls the ratios of certain microbes. So we need a healthy liver to have this diversity. Too many sterilized foods, pasteurized food, radiated food, overly processed food, really bad for your gut. Uh, like I said before, also uh, less uh, variety of foods, right? So the next time you go to the grocery stores, just start picking out different vegetable varieties and start to you know, build out your salad and try new things. Now, another couple points, if you're pregnant or gonna have a child, is breastfeeding because if you're not breastfeeding you're not going to be able to inoculate with the microbes as well as the colostrum into that infant and um, that could be a problem later in life with their microbiome the diversity of microbiome and of course that also goes with the c-section having a natural birth enhances the diversity of your microbes so i wanted to shine a very bright light and focus in on this diversity because i think it's a really important thing and um if you haven't seen my more comprehensive video on digestion, okay, that's a real interesting one. I put that up right here. Check it out.